this is a very important summit, a summit that is coming, first of all, 10 years since the transformation of the OAU into the African Union Commission. Secondly, it is a very important summit because it is coming at a time we have very serious global challenges. We also have regional dynamics that add to these challenges. We know that in the last three years, we have upheavals, economic upheavals globally that started with financial and economic crisis. We now see a budgetary crisis in the West, and of course in Africa. We have had our own share of opportunities and challenges, not least the Arab Spring. All these elements call for Africa to adapt itself to the new situations. And that adaptation requires that we are innovative, that we move with speed, and that we take into account the cognizance, the opportunities that these developments accord us. In the first instance, this commission was elected into office in the year 2008. At that time, the commission inherited a strategic plan that had been implemented from 2003 to 2007. And so the Commission set out to develop the second strategic plan, which was for the period 2009 to 2012. This strategic plan has been implemented studiously. And now we have come to a point that we need to take stock of the achievements of the challenges, then take lessons from that so that we can be quit a new commission that will be elected in the coming days with an opportunity for them to develop a strategic plan for 2013 to 2016. You notice that I skipped 2012 because the current strategic plan covers 2009 to 2012. And so that aspect is well taken care of. And as you know, that strategic plan had four pillars. The first pillar is on peace and security. The second pillar is on development. It is on cooperation and it is on partnerships. The third pillar is on shared values, and the fourth pillar is on institution and capacity building. I will only be very succinct in pointing out that significant progress has been made in all these pillars. To start with on peace and security, I'm sure you have a flood of documents that show you what has been done. We have not only put in place a mechanism to address peace and security, and I'm sure you'd be meeting the Commissioner for Peace and Security, the architecture, but that we have been on the ground to make sure that Africa is at peace with itself and with the rest of the international community. Ten years ago, we had many, many conflict situations in the continent. Today, we can pride ourselves with the fact that because of the mechanisms that have been put in place, because of the concerted efforts of our leaders and our people, Africa is largely at peace. But that doesn't mean all is well. We still have a lot to do. There are a number of still hot spots, and these are the focus not only of the current summit, but also future actions and the rest. Second one on development. 
there's no doubt about the fact that Africa has been growing in the last 10 years. The rate of growth was higher in Africa than anywhere in the world, except for China and India. And of course, that is not by accident. That is because of the reforms that are being put in place. That is because of peace and security. And that is because Africa is also implementing programs that now lead to expansion of the economy and to take advantage of the global opportunities. A number of programs are being implemented in the area of infrastructure. We have not only developed institutional mechanisms, we are now mobilizing resources to implement a number of programs in developing railways, roads, interconnection of airlines, and the rest. These will make Africa more competitive, more connected, and reduce the cost of doing business so that Africa can indeed be linked to the global economy. We have also developed programs under BIDA, I mean under CADEP. A number of countries are now implementing CADEP, and we have started to see agricultural sector turn around. We still have challenges, like the recent case of drought in the Horn of Africa, and that is something that we have also confronted immediately. Not only did we organize an international conference attended by international community, but by Africa itself. And for the first time, Africa for Africa conference that called on the Africans to contribute to this crisis. And as you know, we have now started to develop a regional comprehensive agricultural development program for the one of Africa to ensure that what has happened doesn't happen again. This has been done also as part of our strategic planning. We have worked in the area of reducing mother and child mortality, and the statistics speak to themselves in this area. We are integrating our education system to develop the human resource factor. We are now establishing a Pan-African University. These are all programs that have been undertaken within the strategic plan. If I move to the third pillar on shared values, this is another area where we have made tremendous progress. Many of you will accept and know it because you've been around and you cover this news. 25, 20 years ago, very few African countries held credible elections. Today, like last year, we had 21 elections. Maybe we had challenges in one or two elections, but almost 90%, 99% of them went on smoothly. And we can see progress that is being made in that area. But we are not just concentrating on elections. We are also now talking about having an African governance architecture, an architecture similar to that of the peace and security that I talked about, that has early warning systems, that has like standby force, but this time an architecture that looks at governance in the continent. On strategic partnerships, this has been another exciting period. Africa is now at the table of international community articulating its concerns, pressing for Africa's case, right from the UN system where they are demanding for the restructuring of the UN system, that it can be equitable for Africa to be also given due recognition and presence and representation. We have also been in the other forums, like the G20, like the G8, and Africa, as you know, has had consistently to move for global reorientation but Africa has also been very active in areas like climate change. This has happened during this period that I'm talking about. 